Hey, what is up, everybody? This is your boy AJ Trip. Welcome to the game according to me. We got some topics to talk about for having this month and month of April. A lot of big things happen. We're going to talk about them all. So let's go ahead. Let's get started. Last night's uh, three games. Here is what we had today. Today at 2. The Sixers and the Raptors go ahead in game four. Philly leads 3-0. Raptor Philly looking for a sweep over the Raptors. Raptors looking to win at least one game, extend this series to five at the very least. Game four of the Mavericks and Jazz. Dallas Mavericks are up 2-1. This is at 4-30. Game three in the Boston-Brooklyn series. Boston leads 2-0. Brooklyn is at home. Brooklyn looking to get into the series. Boston looking to take a commanding 3-0 lead. Game 4, Grizzlies and Timberwolves. Memphis leads 2-1. Grizzlies looking to go up 3-1. Timberwolves looking to hold, hold off. Uh, Grizzlies tie this other thing up at 2-2. Tonight, and a, a, a weird situation here as, as well because the Jazz are on the West Coast. And the Timberwolves, even though they're in the Western Conference, they're they're on the East Coast. They're obviously a central, a East, a, a team that's in not not on the West Coast, I should say. Neither them or the Grizzlies. But that game is going to be at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. I know it's a weekend, but still, that, 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 those games should have been moved around. Memphis and Minnesota should have been at 4:30, and the Mavericks and Jazz should have been at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. That's what it should have been. He's looking here at the Sunday. Bucks blew out the Bulls last night. They're looking to hold off the upstart Bulls and take a 3-1 lead tomorrow night, tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock. Game 4 of the Warriors Nuggets series. Warriors have a 3-0 lead. Nuggets looking to hold off a sweep of the uh, uh, um, from the Golden State Warriors. And there's a possibility that Jokic could win the MVP and he could be swept out of the first round of the playoffs. That is very, very interesting. Although, and I think if that does happen, some will say that, you know, you, you need to then wait to after the playoffs or something like that to vote for MVP. No, you shouldn't. The MVP is a regular season award. If Jokic wins it and he gets swept out, that's... You also have to realize that the, you know, the Warriors are the Warriors and the Nuggets are still... They don't have um, the point guard who tore his ACL last year in the playoffs, and they don't have the, uh, the um, um, they don't have Michael Porter Jr. So you have to you have to take that into granted when talking about the Nuggets. The Hawks won last night, um, so tomorrow night in Game Four, uh, Miami is looking to take a three-one lead over those Hawks, and we'll see if they can get that gun together. And also last night, the Suns beat the Pelicans. So tomorrow night, they again with one of these things where the, you know, you know maybe the Warriors and Nuggets should have been, uh, should be the, the night game, and the Suns and Pelicans. The New Orleans is still, even though again they're a West, Western Conference team, they're not in, they're they're they're, they're, they're in the Central Central Time Zone. So at 8:30 Sunday night, the Suns and Pelicans will be playing. Um, Phoenix has a 2-1 lead over the Pelicans. Pelicans looking to tie this series up. And the thing in the playoffs that has been having this year seems to be injuries. Injuries. The Raptors are ravaged with injuries. Scotty Barnes and many others are, are not playing. In the Dallas Mavericks Utah Jazz series, like Luka Doncic is not playing. Um, in the Boston, you know, next is we know about um, Ben Simmons. Although there's been, there's been reports that Ben Simmons could play in Game Four, so. So that and uh, Boston Celtics are getting Robert Williams back um, in, in, uh, in game in, in this upcoming game today, in game three today. So that that's going to be another big guy to go at uh, um, Kevin Durant, you know. So that's all that. Uh, I don't think there are injuries in the Memphis Grizzlies Timberwolves series, in the Bucks Bulls series. We know Lonzo Ball is out for the Bulls and Chris Middleton in game two. Spring is MCL, so he has not been playing. Uh, so we got injuries there. 
I just I talked talk about this second ago, but the Nuggets not having their point guard, I'm blanking on his name, but they don't have Michael Porter Jr. The Warriors um, are pretty healthy. Um, they, they've got back their thing, and now they, they have a new lineup of deaths where they have Jordan Poole, Jeff Curry, Clay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, and um, Draymond Green on the on the court. That's their small lineup. Um, Draymond Green only being six eight six nine, you know. I, I'm not a big fan of playing small. I don't think you should really play small. I think what you want is what you want. You want an athletic big. You want somebody who can you know go out there and be able to guard, you know, on the on the on the outer rim. So you, so you, think, so you don't have to play small. I think playing small just unless you other words you have those you know nuclear weapons Steph Curry and Klay Thompson and now Jordan Poole is is, is playing like that you know it, 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 playing small it doesn't matter this it doesn't seem right so in the Hawks series I believe Clint Capella was injured in the game I don't think he has returned. So we have that, and then in the Suns Pelican series, you know, we know about Zion Williamson not being, you know, cleared to play, and the Suns lost Devin Booker a couple couple games ago, you know, with a hamstring. So this the thing that these playoffs seem to be injuries and how they are affecting these series. But it's one of the best things to start. We got some good things going on right now in the NBA. I'm glad. I'm liking it. I'm watching it. Can't wait. One of the best things about the NBA this first round is that you get four games each day on Saturday and Sunday, and I love it. So, can't wait to continue to watch tonight. Um, so far, they I, I, I don't know why they decided to start their season on the weekend the NBA playoffs were going to start. That, that was weird. It, 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 it should have been like April 2nd. April 2nd should have been the first game, and then you would have had two weekends of you know to get your you know your product out there before the NBA playoffs start, but I think USFL has been has been kind of overlooked because of the NBA playoffs. You know, although that said, last weekend they had some really good ratings. So yeah, you know it's it's, it's football. You no, know, there's a saying that bad pizza is good pizza, and to a certain extent, I agree. Bad pizza is good pizza, although unless you put pineapples on your pizza, you know, because that could also be bad pizza. Putting things on pizzas that you not you don't put pineapples, mushrooms, anchovies, any type of vegetable, <laughs> those don't belong on pizza. So, yeah, I, I, you know, so, and that, and that makes a pizza a bad pizza, even if it's like the best pizza in the world normally. Put that crap on that, it's a bad pizza. Uh, uh, but, um... So even bad football is is good football, and this I, I don't I don't I don't know if this is bad football. Again, I I saw a little bit of first week's game, um, saw a little bit of last Sunday's. You know, I, because of this, because of them doing it on the weekends of the NBA playoffs, I've not like sat you know sat back and watched like a full entire game. Um. I don't don't think I uh, don't think I'm gonna get the chance to probably until you know the playoffs you know you know get down a little bit and they start going into the other divisions when there's when there won't be four games on a Saturday or four games on a Sunday and there will be like two games you know and then maybe I could catch a whole four game but I'm interested in watching and see how this goes and uh, so yeah. Um, uh, there's um the three uh, uh, Fox um, the three networks of Fox uh, FS1 well actually it's just two networks it's Fox and NBC but then all of their networks are bound like Fox you can watch a game today on Fox at 12 noon Eastern time and then you can watch a, a game on FS1 at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time the, first, the game at noon is the Pittsburgh Maulers and the Philadelphia Stars. The, the game at 7 tonight is Birmingham Stallions and the Houston Gamblers. And then there's a game tomorrow at 3 o'clock on NBC and Peacock. 
with the New Orleans Breakers and the Tampa Bay Bandits. And I think the game last night was on USA. So it's between the NBC Universal and the Fox Broadcasting Network. They are combining to broadcast the USFL game. So yeah, check it out. Go to the USFL.com for any more information. But uh, yeah, watch for watch football. We're talking. We're gonna we're gonna talk about football later, obviously, in, in, in this podcast. But yeah, USFL is what is on, and the next year the XFL was. So what happened earlier this month was the wrap up wrap up to the NCAA tournament in the Final Four. Quickly, let's go over them on Saturday, April second. Running over, lost to Kansas, eighty one to sixty five. Pretty much ending the uh, ending Jay Wright's career uh, with a loss. He retired just a couple days ago. Announced his retirement and uh, from Villanova from college basketball. So a lot of major things happening with them over here. Kansas went on to take on North Carolina as North Carolina ended Coach K's career by beating them 81 to 77. Um, Ending the ending the, the career of um, Coach K from Duke, and you, you, two Hall of Fame coaches with their careers being ended this year. Jay Wright from Villanova and Coach K from Duke. But what an incredible run for both of those both of those guys. Wish them all the best in their future. Um, but then we had to go to the championship game. Monday, April 4th, Villanova in North Carolina. Who would be the 2022 champion? And, and of course, it's, it's not going to work for me. Um, but it turned out to be Kansas. Bill Self in Kansas wins another national championship, beating North Carolina 72-69. to um, All in all right, this was a you know, pretty interesting championship game. There was some talk. I, I don't. I, I don't know if it was the national championship game or if it was one of the um, one of the um, um, final four games, semi championship games. Um, but somebody got injured with the floor. The floor came up and injured one of, one of the players. So I think it may have been from North Carolina in this game. I'm not sure, but yeah, it was us. That uh, was. Unfortunately, to see, but Kansas ends up winning the national championship of 2022. So, congratulations to the Kansas Jayhawks and all of their the fans and alumni being for being the NCAA college, uh, college basketball champion. And of course, we had uh, at the end we had one shiny moment sung by Luther Vandross, as it should be. Uh, so yeah. Um, and it, it, it topped off a very interesting NCAA tournament, I think. Um, good run by the St. Saint, Saint Peter's Peacocks. They had a great run in it. And, uh, and some other good runs as well from other teams. And So really, really fun, fun tournament, I see. And uh, I'm not a college basketball guy, an NBA guy, not a college basketball guy. But when the tournament comes, it's always fun. Fun to do the brackets and to you know do all those other good things. So had another blast. Two weeks into the major league baseball season, let's check and see what's going around in the uh, in the in the well, what do you call it? It's, we're going both leagues. Uh, start with the American League. Uh, in the AL East, teams seem to be doing their normal thing. The Blue Jays are on top. The Yankees second. Red Sox and Rays tied for third. And the Orioles kicking up the rear. In the AL Central, the Guardians are the uh, not the Cleveland in the pe- prior Cleveland Indians, but the Guardians are now seven and six. Mm, White Sox are six and seven. Twins are six and eight. The Royals and Tigers and Green at the rear are five and seven. And in the West, the Mariners and Angels are tied for first with eight and six records. The athletes and Ast- uh, the, um, uh, no, the Athletics are eight and seven. And third, the Astros are six and seven. 
uh, fourth place, and the Rangers are four and nine, uh, bringing up the rear MG, uh in the West. Looking over, taking out in the National League, the Mets are the top dog. They are eleven and four in the NL East. The Braves, uh, the defending champion, uh, Atlanta Braves are seven and eight. Phillies and Marlins and Nationals bringing up the rear respectively with six and eight, five and eight, and six and ten records. In the NL Central, the Pirates, like the student, the Cardinals are eight and four. The Brewers are eight and six. The Pirates are seven to seven. The Cubs had a kind of a hard start. Uh, now dropped the ball back off. They are um, six and eight. The Reds are two and twelve. The Reds traded everybody, so of course they're gonna suck. On the Dodgers, uh, the team most likely to uh, picked by most people to be uh, in the World Series from the National League. They, it's, uh, they are starting hot. They had a 10 3 record. Big controversy a couple of weeks ago as uh, um, Clayton Carshaw had a perfect perfect game through seven innings and he was taken, six to six innings maybe, or whatever it was, but he was taken out by Dave Roberts. And many people are very split on this. You know, do you, you know, with, with such a shortened, um, shortened preseason, basically, spring training. Uh, do you, you know, do you, you know, do you take him out and and do you save him for later on in the year? He's had a bunch of injuries in prior four or five years that, 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 that he has played, did not play in the postseason, pitching postseason. I think last year. So do you, you know, do you take him off to save his arm or do you let him go for the perfect game? Uh, and I, I think you let him go for the perfect game. And like a lot of people like that, like that as well. You know, Jake Arrieta said it. Jeff Passan, a writer for ESPN, said it. I think you, would, you should have let him go on for the perfect game. That's just me, though. The Rockies are 8-4. and four. The Giants are 9-5 and five in third place. Um, the Padres are 9-6 and six in fourth place. And the Diamondbacks bring up the rear in, at 5-9 and nine in the NL West. Uh, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of stories um, happening in these first two years. We look at... Uh, MLB.com's uh, takeaway two weeks into the 22-22 Major League Baseball s- season. Um, here are uh, uh, seven storylines that might stick. Will they stick? Uh, one, one, Francisco Lindor is taking over Queens the way he was supposed to. He's been very hot. Um, and uh, Mets fans are, you know, having a lot of fun. He has recently just had a three-hit game. Um, but can he keep it continued? You know, as Sammy Sosa would say, this season we have to wait and see. Number two, the Angels have some good vibes going. Um, with Mike Trout being announced as the best player, you know, this you know, this side of Barry Bonds, uh, they really have not made the playoffs at all with, with Mike Trout. They are, you know, and a lot of people are saying they are wasting Mike Trout. But they start. They're starting off hot, uh, even though Shohei Otani has a slow start. Um, you know, you know his slow start. You know, and a lot of other things. Noah Syndergaard looks dominant in the pitching series, and and Matt, Matt Matt Duffy has has you know taken on you know the place, even though Anthony Rendon has not been hitting. But Angels are doing some good things, and we'll see if they can finally make the playoffs with Mike Trout. Um, the veterans are still being able to pitch, right? Adam Rainwright at 40 is two and is two and one with two uh, 281 ERA. Justin Verlander at 39 is one and one with 0. 0.69 ERA. Zach Greinke at 38 is 0 and one with 2.25 ERA. Max Scherzer 3 and 0 with 2.50 ERA. Chloe Kluber 36. Uh, 0 and 0 with a 1.6 ERA and Carlos Carrasco 35 is a 1 and 1 and 0 with a 1.475 and don't forget Clayton Kershaw as I just mentioned almost threw a perfect game. Um, the four Yankees might be carried by their pitching and if you look at this Cole you know has a 6.3 ERA but he is being helped by Jordan Montgomery who is a 2.5 ERA. Luis Savino at 2.08 ERA, Jameson Thailon at 3.72 ERA, and Nestor uh, Cortez who hasn't given up a run in nine in uh, nine in the third inning. Um, they've been hitting the ball a little bit, 
But um, there's some, <laughs> there's a lot of people saying that this could happen. So I think it's amazing. We'll see if their pitching can keep up. Um, number five, Nor Nolan Arenado may be having a career year. Uh, he's never won an MVP. Um, but I feel like this might be his year. He's off to his best start of his career, hitting 405 with an on base of 468 and a slugging percentage of 881. Um, this is his line in his first 11 games and a winning player of the week award. He's been looking his best he's ever looked. And could Noriano keep this up and win his first MVP award? The NL West is stacked. Yeah, we, it was last year. It was supposed to be Dodgers and Padres all year, and it turned out to be Dodgers and Giants. This year, we might have four teams at each other's throats all year round. The Dodgers are rolling like they always do, but they have they're one of four teams in the division over 500. The Padres pitching looks light years better than it was last year. The offense led by MVP level Manny Machado could carry this team. The Giants are winning again in that magical, mystical way that they only know to seem to know how to do. And look at those Colorado Rockies, who have the highest team OPS, 798 in baseball, but also have a rotation that's holding up as well. Mm. Pity the poor D-Packs. But even if the Rockies fall off a little bit, this division is going to be a gauntlet all year round. And the last one, the new playoff format is going to make the entire year like this. Everything is already so tight. But the new format ensures that it stays like this. For the sake of fun, here's what the playoff matchup for each league would look like right now if the season ended today. In the American League, the Blue Jays and the Angels would have buys. The wild card round would look at the number six seed Mariners against the number three seed Guardians. And the number five seed Yankees would take on the number four seed A's. In the National League, the number one, the, the buys would be the number one seed Dodgers and the number two Mets. The wild card round would be the number six seed Brewers against the number three seed Cardinals, and the number five seed Padres versus the number four seed Rockies. For the talk of too many playoff teams, there are no cheapies here. Every one of those teams is pleased with its start so far. They're going to be tightly jammed all summer, and it's going to be like this all year round. Yeah, that is one thing for those of y'all who may not know. The, um, the playoff format is going to like the old football format, where it's 12 teams, six teams will make it in each conference. The number one and two seed will get buys, and the wild card round will play. They they will play three a three game series, best two out of three. Uh, all three games being at the home uh, home park, I believe. So, like in the American League, all three games will be in Seattle, where the Mariners are the number no not the Mariners it will be at Cleveland. With the Guardians and the number three seed, and then um, the four seed, uh, the other one would be at the uh, Oakland Athletics. However, have you have you heard about this? Was going on like this? The you know the Oakland A's fans have seemingly looked like they've had enough of their owners' bullshit because um, they have not been going there. You know, they've been having under five thousand. People at their games, at their home games, under five thousand. So it's at some point, if even if the A's keep continuing, I don't look, doesn't look like the fans are gonna go, and they're gonna make, you know, they're gonna add something because the A's, you know, they, they, this is just like the, the Cincinnati Reds. The A's are another team that traded is traded off, folks, and in but they're still in the in the league, as you can see, they're still in playoff contention. And it, and the fans have been like, well, if you're just trading off, folks, you're not trying to win, not trying to spend money, why the hell are we going to go? So, that's something amazing to, to think, think about, right? So, the first two weeks of the Major League Baseball um, season looks intriguing. We'll see um, how these uh, other storylines happen, how things fight out. We'll check up on it again next month as well and also make sure you go over to my other podcast the uh, the word according to me uh i talked about jackie robinson as uh last friday the 15th was the 75th anniversary of jackie robinson breaking into the color bearer so if you go over there and find it out um it's you know just search for the game according to me or from for the mind the aj trip it's on this wherever you're listening to this podcast other than anchor fm um, 
I'm sure uh, that part, uh, the, my, my other podcast is on there as well. So just search for the game according to search for the word according to me, excuse me, or from the mind of AJ Trip, you should find it. But yeah, that's what's happening right now, two weeks into the Major League Baseball season. Big news happened earlier this month as well, as Tiger Woods, 18 months after his just tragic car crash, um, remember that 18 months, maybe about maybe like a year after the first car crash, um, but 18 months after he's played in his last tournament, he announced that he would be playing in the 2022 Masters, which is a shock to everyone. And, um, you know, it was, it was interesting, you know, you get everybody back into thinking about golf and me, me, me I, I got so into it, uh, I didn't watch it and I'm never going to watch it, but I played my, my, um, PGA 2K 2021 game and played some golf on there. <laughs> so it, it was, it was incredible. And, uh, I don't, you know, he, he thought he could win. I don't think anybody else thought he could win, and it didn't. And you know, and even though he had a first good day on Thursday, he just couldn't couldn't pull it out. Uh, he uh, he ended he ended the uh, the Masters uh, plus thirteen. Um, uh, here's what he told CBS: It was an unbelievable, unbelievable feeling to have the patrons, the support out there. Wasn't exactly playing my best, but to have that support and the appreciation from other fans, I don't think words can really describe that. Given where I was just a little over a year ago, my prospects were at that time to end up here to be able to play all four rounds. Even a month ago, I didn't know I could pull this off. So I think it was a positive. I've got some work to do, and I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, I mean, it, it was a absolutely incredible feat for Tiger Woods because after that car crash. A lot of, you know, and, and the stuff we hear about her, about his legs and everything, we just want him to walk, be able to, be able to walk you know, without pain, and walk, you know, walk without a limp, or, you know, make sure he, he, he's able to be able to do the things to see, you know, his children grow up, you know, right, something like that. And, and you know, and, and I think a lot, a lot of us thought, this Jesus, it was... It was just a little. It was little, it was a little over a year, 13, 14 months after we lost Kobe in 2020, and then in 2021, we get word that Tigers had a had devastating car accident, and the and the scene was and the car was crushed and everything. And, wow, I think he comes back from that, plays in the Masters, is incredible, and um. Listen, he didn't win it. He wasn't even close. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, I believe, won the Masters, so good for him. But, man, Tiger Woods came back, and uh, it it energized golf fans and people like me who are not golf fans and made them more interested in seeing what was going to happen. So, Tiger Woods is one of the all-time greats, one of the best athletes to ever make it. And uh, I think he proved why, even though he didn't win, he proved why he is that damn good uh, a couple weeks ago so good on Tiger so let's, let's quickly talk about what has happened in football over the past month or so since we last talked uh, to be honest with you nothing really big has happened you know um, uh, then the biggest thing was there was a trade uh, with the Eagles and the Saints, where the Saints gave up, uh, gave up pick this year and a pick next, gave up their first round pick this year, and a pick next year to get two picks from the Eagles. The Eagles had three picks, and the Eagles picked up other picks as well. So I think I think it was like a trade. It was like a three pick for five pick trade between the Saints and the Eagles. So that was very interesting. There was a couple of. Um, uh, like big time things. I think we had uh, um, what was the guy's name? Um, we had uh, we had Stephen Gilmore. He signed with the Indianapolis Colts, two years for twenty million dollars. I think they're going to help the Colts out in their secondary. 
Uh, Denzel Ward, he signed a five-year, $100.5 million contract extension to stay in Cleveland. He will not be a free agent next year. Um, and really, again, that's really been it. It's, it really, what it's been about, what we're waiting for right now is we're waiting for two. We're waiting for the draft, which is happening next week, next Thursday. Uh, if you want to hear about what we know, what my thoughts on the draft are, you can check my Hit the last edition of the podcast. If you not have heard it, I got it up there. And also on my Twitter, it's on my Twitter account. Uh, you can search through, again, just search for, you know, draft. I, I, I did a, uh, a, a, a draft myself, you know. We're one of those, one of those site websites, and I put it up on Twitter so that you can see it. But really, it, it's really all about Baker Mayfield and where is he going right Debo Samuel has has asked for a trade from the San, San Francisco, um, and it looks like you know Kadarius Tony, who was just drafted last year, is being shot by the New York Giants. But the big thing is Baker Mayfield. Where is he going to go? And he, when, he when there was some talk about him going to Carolina, Robbie Anderson, the wide receiver at Carolina, put put on Instagram, no. <laughs> he, he did not want Baker Mayfield, and then when when when, a, when another website, you know, put that out saying, you know, Robbie Anderson doesn't want Baker Mayfield to come to Carolina, he doubled down on it and and, 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 and commented under that post saying facts. So that, that that seems like that's what I don't know if that's what everybody, but that's at least what one person thinks about Baker Mayfield. Uh, and that, that's right now. It does seem like there's some talk, and the talk does seem to be Carolina. It's like they may have to trade Robbie Anderson if they're going to trade for Baker Mayfield. But Sam Donald is already still there in in, in Carolina, and they you know get, they picked up his option, gave him some money. So I mean, who knows what's happening? It's gonna what's gonna happen? We're all waiting for Baker Mayfield. I think once that Baker Mayfield you know thing drops, it's gonna be interesting. I. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm going to say this. Uh, I don't think he gets traded over draft weekend. I know. I, I think the trade happens once we get into once, once we get into June 1st and like the releases start, the June 1st releases start. And then I think sometime, sometime in between June 1st and July 31st, somewhere like that. Uh, I you know what I I I'll say this. I think somewhere between June first and the fourth of July, Baker Mayfield will be traded somewhere, and, I, and that's very good. Obviously, good, good chance Baker Mayfield might get released as well. So that that, that could happen. But I'm going to say he does get traded. It happens in between the June first, the July fourth um, dates, and uh, we'll see how right I am on that Baker Mayfield stuff. But there's also been some other things uh, happening as well. well. Just last time we talked, Bruce Arians, which retired, moved to the front office, and Todd Bowles is now becoming the coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And one of the reasons why he did that is because he said that he didn't. He, he know he wanted this to happen. He had a succession plan. He wanted Todd Bowles to re, to replace him. But what he didn't want to, what to happen was for Todd Bowles to, to were for him to give it to Todd Bowles, and they didn't have a great team. Because with Tom Brady coming back, they still have a pretty good team. So he wanted to make sure that Todd Bowles at least had one year of the Tom Brady era with a good team and see what they can do with that. Bruce Arians is going up into the front office. He'll still be around, still making the decisions, but it is now Todd Bowles' team to control. Now, there are some rumors and speculation out there that this was one of the things that brought that was able to make Tom Brady come back was that Bruce Arians would not be the coach of the team. Because there have been there have been rumors, speculation that they didn't get along too well towards the end of last year. Um, you know, um, Brady and and Leftwich, the office coordinator Brian Leftwich, they would come up with a game plan, things like that, and then when they would bring in the Arians, he would wouldn't like it, he would change it. And things like that, and they they kind of butted heads. So, but many people, Jeff Darlington and many others, have said that this is not what Bruce Arians does. This is not this is not his thing. He doesn't back down from anybody. He would not have you no know, you no know, back down to for, to Tom Brady 
for Tom Brady for this to happen. And so this was just him wanting to do right by his 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 his, um, his coordinator. Which, by the way, he is the only coach that has an entire minority coaching staff. He's got like all his coaches, all his assistant coaches are black, and he has one white female on it. Uh, so you know, he's that's one of the things he's been known for. But he wanted to make sure that a black head coach, Todd Bowles, would have an off an opportunity to make some moves. And with what's happening going on in the NFC was, you know, looking like right now only teams that are, you know, you consider to be good would be the the Broncos, the the Packers, the Broncos, not the Broncos, the the Buccaneers, uh, the Packers. And the Rams, and we don't know about San Francisco because we don't know what's happening now with Debo Samuel asking for a trade, and could it, you know could they could, could could San Francisco still trade Jimmy Garoppolo? Although he's coming off surgery, so shoulder surgery, so that might not happen as well. A lot of things happening over there in in the, in the NFC, but it looks to be a three-team race. While in the AFC, every goddamn team is in it. Every goddamn team is in it. And, that, and and that's and, that, and that's not a shoot. And, that, and that, that's not that's not a lie, right? That's not a lie because every goddamn team isn't. We don't know even the Jets. The Jets has two draft picks in their first ten picks, and they can and, and they could take you can find some people that could change the way you know could help Zach Wilson play, can protect him and help him play. They draft a receiver, and they draft Kyle Hamilton, help their defense out. Anything could anything could happen. In the AFC, and it's going to be a wild, wild ride. I cannot wait to see what happens. Gonna... It's like four or five months left before we really get into entire football season, so it's going to be awesome. But we got the draft coming up next Thursday, and I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see what happens in that first round. My Bears will not have a pick, but they don't need to because it's going to be very interesting. And see and see what happens. We still and see if Baker Mayfield does get traded on that Thursday or in that entire weekend. So, but yeah, NFL still king. Just can't beat it. And the main event of this podcast, and as we should, you know, <laughs> it's very interesting as I call it that, it is probably the biggest event to happen this month. WrestleMania 38. WrestleMania Saturday, April 2nd, WrestleMania Sunday, April 3rd. An absolutely fantastic two night event. Should be one night, but it's a two night event. And uh, just incredible. From Dallas and AT&T Stadium. 77,899 night one, 78,453 night two for a total of 156,352. Incredible, incredible numbers. Let's really quickly go through them. If you want to, you can go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash A Triple 20 and check out, um, or search AJ Trip in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, search bar, and you can go and find my Rebel reaction to both night one and night two, uh, so you get the full breakdown. What you thought about them, but I'm just gonna give you a really quick a quick run through what happened. Uh, night one started off with the Usos versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boos for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. The Usos won. They had to end this end the match quickly because Rick Boos tore uh, tore uh, a tendon in his knee and also tore the hamstring off the bone, I believe. Um, you wish Rick Boos a quick and healthy recovery. Usually that takes a full year, so hopefully we'll see him sometime around this year and next year. Um, second match, Drew McIntyre versus Happy Corbin. Drew McIntyre won, won with the fact of um, Baron Corbin, first time somebody kicked out of the end of days. So um, that was very interesting. As a match, he took his sword and cut the ropes. Incredible from Drew McIntyre. Uh, next one, and then this is where the night one really started to get picked up and could get going. Ray and Dominic Mysterio versus The Miz and Logan Paul. The Miz and Logan Paul won. They were incredible. Logan Paul had such 
such presence about him and such good facials and he was doing great moves. He was being a heel the way he's known to be. He was incredible. Great job, Logan Paul. I don't know what they were doing after the match with the Miz. Turning on Logan Paul. I don't know what that was for. Logan Paul hasn't been seen since. So, let's wait and see. Um, the Raw Women's Championship, Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair won. Fantastic match. It was um, really, really good. Probably the best match of the entire weekend. Um, really good stuff. Uh, uh, they, you know, um, Becky Lynch was going for a Molly go round. And either she came up too short or Bianca Belair was too far away. And she ended up just absolutely smoking. <laughs> Bianca Belair with a foot right in the face. You know, swelled her eye up. Next night on Raw, you can see that it was swelled shut. So it was, it was, it was not a good, you know, thing. But Bianca Belair overcame that with one eye and still won of the Raw Women's Champions and beating Becky Lynch. South Freakin Wallens versus to be announced. It was Cody Rhodes. Like we all thought, Cody Rhodes won. Um, uh, that was a good match too. Crowd was really into it. Charlie Flair versus Ronda Rousey. And that was a great match as well. Charlie Flair surprisingly beat Ronda Rousey. Not sure where they were going with that. They, you know, the way they were going, they, they, they wanted to lead up to an I quit match between Charlotte and Ronda, uh, which is having a WrestleMania backlash. And that still could have happened, but Ronda could have won. And I don't know why they went away from that. So it was that. And then there was a surprise match with the KO show and KO invited Stone Cold Steve Austin. And it turned into a no hose barred match between Austin and Owens and Boyd. And they, they fought up and down the aisle and up on the stage and everything like that. And it was, what is it? It was fun. It was some cool old fashioned fun stuff. And Stone Cold Steve Austin won. He beat Kevin, Kevin Owens. And uh, so, yeah, that was night one. Really, really fun night. Uh, it's really, really great stuff. Night two started off with Triple H coming out and, you know, in welcoming, welcoming everybody to uh, WrestleMania night two. He also did the thing that's known to do where you leave the boots in the ring. That means you retired. We found out that he can no longer wrestle because he has a defibrillator in his chest after his uh, cardiac event. So he's no longer being able to wrestle. So. Uh, you know, bad thing for them. But we started off with the Triple Threat Tag Match for the Raw Championship. We had RK Bro. They defeated the Street Profits and Alpha Academy. Um, it was a really good match. High energy, you know, from the start to the finish. You know, we had uh, the RKO um, winning from, you know, Chad Gable jumping off the top rope and Randy Orton catching them in an RKO. Uh, that was some good fun stuff. And then we had, um, after the match, uh, Profits and RK Bro, you know, they got together and they invited in Gable Stevenson. Chad Gable came in, talked, talked some match to Gable Stevenson. Gable Stevenson gave him the, gave him an overhead bit of a suplex and he went off with the gun with the faces and drunk his, uh, his, uh, uh, drunk some stuff with them, whatever they were drinking. So, whatever it was. Bobby Lashley defeated Omos, giving Omos his first pin loss. Um, I think, uh, I think, I, I, I think, like everybody, I think the best thing would have been done here was that if you if you were going to have MVP turn heel on Bobby Lashley, then you probably should have had. And, and I don't mind. I, well, I kind of do mind. Um, I, would, I would like to see Omos have his streak, you no, know, you no, know, continue. But if you're going to beat Bobby Lashley, then you should have had, like, you know. The, you, should, you should have had the turn. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know what it was, so whatever. But Bobby Lashley beat Omos. Dre Knoxville defeated Sami Zayn in an anything goes match, and anything did go. They brought out a a hand, big flying hand. They brought out a stop sign. They brought out a table with mouse traps. They brought a, 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 a scene that kicks you in the nuts. 
Uh, it was just, it was, it was wild. It was one of those things where this, this wasn't wrestling. This wasn't a wrestling match, but it was some good, fun, funny stuff, and uh, it was enjoyed. And Jane Nashville beat Sami Sami Zayn. Sasha Banks and Naomi they defeated Queen Zelina and Carmella. Rhea Ripley, Lee Morgan, and Italian Cena Baszler uh, for the tag team championships. Edge and um, Edge and AJ Styles had a match. Edge won by. Basically a distraction as um, out of nowhere, Damian Priest showed up and uh, distracted AJ Styles, and AJ Styles went for the phenomenal form and get caught in the spear. Uh, the New Day took on Sheamus and Rich Holland. Sheamus and Rich Holland won a uh, very short match. Uh, they have here seven minutes and ten seconds, and that's kind of interesting. I, I, I wonder if that's from 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 entrance to to bail because. That, that, that didn't seem like seven minutes, but whatever it was. Um, New Day came out in their Big E, um, Big e Collective, so that was good. Pat McAfee and Austin Theory had a match that Pat McAfee did win. Again, Pat McAfee looking so good. He did that spot again where he ran up and jumped on the top rope and suplexed him. He did a suplex on the top rope. He did this match with Adam Cole a um, couple years back during the, um, during the pandemic. Then afterwards, McMahon, Vince McMahon, who was out there with Austin Theory, got in the ring and challenged Pat McAfee to a match, which was just, it was basically Vince McMahon just walking around doing the, uh, as, as people, people have said this before, doing the Orange Cassidy kicks. <laughs> and then he kicked them, he kicked Pat McAfee in the stomach with a football and pinned them one, two, three. And uh, so McMahon beat. <laughs> Pat McAfee right afterwards, and then while they were celebrating, Austin came out, stunned the Austin Theory, and tried to stun Vince McMahon, giving us the, oh my heaven, one of the worst stun sales you've ever seen, and it was just absolutely incredible. He kicked him, he, Austin kicked Vince in the stomach, and for some reason, my Vince, he just, he, 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 I don't even know if Austin kicked him that hard. But he just he just flew back into the ropes and also was just trying to grab him and he knew it sucked and he started laughing his ass off because he just couldn't help it. So uh, it was it was absolutely incredible. You gotta see that. Uh, it's, it's one for the ages. Incredible. And then of course the unification match between Roman Reigns and Brock Le uh, Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar was Roman Reigns winning, defeating Brock Lesnar, becoming the undisputed unified WWE Universal Heavyweight Champion continuing in his dominance he is in God mode greatness on a different level it was really fun to see then that ended night two pretty pretty good night as well all together WrestleMania was an entire great fun it always is don't listen to the haters what they say WrestleMania is always fun. And even if for some reason you are a WWE fan and you get you know if you if you get like dis disallowed with the, the, the product, uh, I don't know how you can be if you are a WWE fan. Because they've been they've been great. But if you somehow are and and you get you're a true WWE fan, but you are very, you know very not you, you just been, you know, not into the product you can always make sure that Wrestlemania is going to be the best and you should always watch Wrestlemania hey. alright y'all that is it for this episode of the podcast make sure you come back next time next month we're going to again do more updates on the NBA playoffs more updates on the league baseball more updates of what's happening on the NFL in the offseason quick draft recap maybe some of the you know stuff that happened went down on on uh, on night one and some of the other notable names that were drafted some that maybe there wasn't, wasn't as well and a lot of other stuff that's, that may happen over that time in the world of sports and, and, uh, and wrestling. So make sure you're going to be here next month. Um, 
Make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening on to. You subscribe. If you're on Anchor.fm and you enjoy this podcast, make sure you uh, and you want to help a brother out. Please help a brother out. Yeah, going through a little, going through a real tough time as many, many people are. But if you have the ability and you like this podcast, you have the ability you want to see this podcast continue. Please either join Patreon, patreoncom trip to become a patron. Just once you get, once I hit a certain amount of patrons, you will be able to determine what you will see on my YouTube channel, what you will hear on the, the podcast of the world according to me, and what you might do something on Twitch or something like that. So you can do that, or again, you can go to anchor.fm slash under triple show, and you can subscribe there. 99 cents a month, 4.99 cents a month, or $9.99 cents a month. You know, that's if you really want, you really like this podcast, my podcast, my YouTube channel, whatever, and you want to help a brother out, you can do those things to support your boy. I appreciate it. And if you can't do it monetarily, obviously just keep subscribing, keep listening, sharing the podcast, all that good stuff. And I, I, you do not know. For the, for the small bit of you who listen right now, you have no idea how much that appreciate you know what that does for me. That appreciates me and it, it keeps me going to keep it, keep this happening so that I can one day become a bigger and better podcast. I appreciate like that and maybe even do something like Pat McAfee does. I think that, I think that's something that I would love to do is let me you know maybe and I don't know if it's every day but maybe every other day do a podcast. You know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday do a podcast on YouTube and then whatever or Twitch or something like that. I think it would be great. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. This is your boy, AJ Tripp, signing off. As always, be good to each other, y'all. Be careful out there. I will see you next month in May. And I am out.